clean your house, but then over time, what happens? It returns back to a chaotic mess. This applies to molecules in a process called diffusion. Diffusion is the process of spreading things more widely. This basic principle of chemistry and physics underlies how oxygen moves in your blood, how your body absorbs water and salt, how your cells make ATP, and even how your brain cells that are processing this information make their signals. If I were to add a bunch of molecules to a container, they would move around at random. The fancy term for this is Brownian motion. This random movement results in the molecules spreading out until they reach a homogeneous distribution, by which I mean the molecules are bouncing off of each other and eventually spreading out evenly within the space. When we consider the entire group rather than an individual molecule, the molecules have moved from high concentration to low until they reach an equilibrium. I think of it like this. Moving from high to low is like going down the slide. It's easy and it doesn't take any energy. But moving from low to high is like taking the stairs. It takes energy and the molecules just don't wanna do it on their own. So let's look at this at the molecular level. Here's a bunch of molecules and they're in very high concentration here and over here they're in low concentration. It takes a lot of energy to keep these molecules locked together in a small space. The molecules want to move at random, which means they want to move out of the space that's holding them. So let's let them go. Where do you think they're going to end up? As a result of the random movement, several will end up over on the low concentration side. This is because the lowest energy state for the molecules is to be spread out. Just like when it comes to your room, if no energy is put into keeping everything clean, your things end up everywhere. While some of the molecules might move from the low concentration side toward the high concentration side, they're in the minority. In the end, this random movement results in the molecules reaching an equilibrium, the same number on both sides. This process of molecules moving from high concentration to low concentration is called diffusion. We represent diffusion as dq over dt. Q stands for flow, and in this case, it means the flow of molecules. dt means over time. So this expression gives us the flow of molecules over time is diffusion. Diffusion is affected by several environmental factors. Temperature, distance, molecular weight, concentration gradient, and the area that the molecules have to move around in. Don't get scared of this equation. It looks really complicated, but we're going to break it down. The diffusion coefficient, d, is related to the speed that an individual molecule moves. And it makes sense that the faster the molecule moves, the faster diffusion is going to occur. So how do we change the molecule speed? One way to do this is using temperature. When temperatures are warm, there's more energy in the environment, and this results in the molecules moving faster. When molecules are cold, they move much more slowly. A is the area that the molecules have to interact with as they're crossing from high concentration to low. Now, to think about this, let's imagine if we were at a concert. At the end of the show, all the exits are open, and then there's lots of spaces for people to travel through, and this allows them to diffuse quickly out of the concert arena. But if only one exit is opened, now there's going to be a backup, and it's harder for people to diffuse out of the arena. The same is true for molecules on their way to equilibrium. If they have a large area to interact with, they'll be able to diffuse across it faster than if they only have a small area. And that funky DC over DX is the concentration gradient. This relates to how many molecules are present on either side of the space. So back to our concert example. 
If there are a lot of people inside the arena and not so many outside, then people are going to be able to exit the arena relatively quickly without bumping into others on their way out. But if the next show has begun and now people are trying to enter while other people are trying to exit, they're going to bump into each other and their interactions are going to slow down the movement. X is the distance that the molecule has to move when it travels. If you're at the concert and you're up in the nosebleed section, it's going to take you much longer to reach the parking lot than if you were someone seated right next to the exit. This applies to molecules too. On its own, without the help of other things, diffusion is really slow. Without your heart helping it move, it would take over 60 years for oxygen to make it from your lung to your big toe. And last, but certainly not least, is that MW, and by that I mean molecular weight. Large things are going to move much slower than small things. The bigger something is, the more likely it is to bump into things in the environment, and that's going to slow it down. So if you were trying to exit the concert and you were wearing one of those giant T-Rex costumes because, you know, you want to be incognito when trying to exit the arena, it would be way more difficult for you than if you were just trying to exit in your normal clothes. So now that you know about what affects diffusion, let's think about how all of these things together would affect a molecule if conditions were perfect. The temperature is hot. The molecule has a lot of gates that it can move through. The concentration is very different from the inside to the outside. The distance the molecule has to travel is short and the molecule is very small. In the end, how do you think this would impact the speed of the molecule's diffusion? It would move fast. So let's think of diffusion in terms of how your body operates. So take a deep breath. The air inside of your lungs is going to have more oxygen than your blood. So which way will the oxygen want to go? Into the blood, obviously, but why? The oxygen molecules will be moving from high concentration in your lungs to low concentration in the blood and the surface area of your lungs is very, very large. This means that the oxygen has more chances to interact with the membrane and cross it. On the flip side, carbon dioxide is much higher in your blood than it is in the atmosphere, and this means that when you breathe out, carbon dioxide wants to follow its concentration gradient and move from the high concentration in the blood to the low concentration in the air. But what about instances where the concentration gradient changes based on the environment? Like if you're at high altitude where there's a lower concentration of oxygen in the environment than at sea level. This means that the difference between the oxygen outside of your body and inside is not as great. So the oxygen will have less of a drive to enter your blood and your body is going to have a harder time getting that oxygen. If you normally live at sea level, this is why when you go up to the mountains, you feel tired and sometimes sick. To think about how this works inside of your cells, we're going to look at cell respiration. Here, hydrogen ions are in much higher concentration outside the mitochondrial membrane than they are inside. We use this concentration gradient to create energy. This happens not unlike creating power at a hydroelectric power plant. Here, the water moves from the top of the waterfall to the pool at the bottom, and as it does this, it is traveled from a high energy state to a low energy state. This results in it releasing energy, and this energy can be captured and used to create electricity. In your cells, since a lot of energy is being used to hold those hydrogen ions at a higher concentration, Allowing them to flow down their concentration gradient results in them moving from high energy to low energy. This energy has to go somewhere, and here it is harnessed to make ATP. So, if you're feeling lazy and don't want to spend the energy to clean the chaos of your room, don't feel bad. Your cells don't want to spend energy either. Just blame it on a fundamental property of your molecules. So before you turn off this video and diffuse into your natural environment, let's do a quick recap. What is diffusion? 
Diffusion is the movement of molecules from high concentration to low concentration. This happens passively, and eventually, if nothing gets in the way, it will reach equilibrium. What affects diffusion? There are many factors that can impact diffusion. Temperature influences molecule speed. The faster the molecules move, the faster they can diffuse. Area, the more area that the molecules have to interact with as they move from one side to the other, the faster they'll be able to diffuse. Concentration gradient, the bigger the difference in the amount of molecule between the two sides, the more likely it is to move in one direction and the faster it will diffuse. Distance, the further the molecule has to travel, the longer it takes. Molecular weight, the larger a molecule is, the slower it moves and the harder it is for it to move without bumping into stuff. And some examples of diffusion that naturally occur in your body. In your lungs, oxygen moves down its natural concentration gradient into the blood and carbon dioxide moves down its gradient in the opposite direction. At the mitochondrion, hydrogen ions move down their concentration gradient, providing energy, which is used to make ATP. Before you go, even though it means you need to expend a little energy, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video where we'll take everything you just learned about diffusion and apply it to the role of cell membranes. Stay tuned.